Well, this is God's time. Amen? Amen. 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 I, um, I am really honored to be with you this morning. And um, again, I, I just want to give kudos to the church here, to uh, Pastor Ray and his crew. Yeah. And I, I am so very thankful that as we are, you know, going through this passage and, and dealing with points of contention in our spiritual life, I personally am so very grateful that our God, the God who saved us, the God who rescued us, he, he gives us, he's given me, he gives us a lifetime to work these things out, amen? And, and please don't, don't take that as an excuse like, oh yeah, then I can get to that you know, at some other stage in my life. No, he wants us to continue on and to press in all the more. Would you stand with me as we read the passage once again in 1 Kings chapter two? If you can, stand, and I'll read out loud as we read the opening four verses. 1 Kings chapter two. Now, the days of David drew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth, Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man, and keep the charge of the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, and and here's, here's my section, that you may prosper in all that you do. And wherever you turn, verse 4, that the Lord may fulfill his word which he spoke concerning me, saying, if your sons take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, he said, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Father, we stand before you as your men. God, men at very different stages of life. Lord, in in the midst of different challenges in our spiritual walk, and yet today we're confronted, Lord, with the fact that though those things are there, Lord, you are with us. And Lord Jesus, that you've gone before us even. And we thank you for that. And, And we pray now that again your spirit would just fill us, to flood us, Lord, to instruct us, God, to renew us, and for your glory let it be, in Jesus' precious and powerful name. Amen? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So the, t- the subtitle in my, my Bible, I think it's in the King James, or the New King James, the subtitle there is David's Instructions to Solomon. Now, we know that that's uninspired. It, it's not likely to have been in the original trans- manuscripts, but as we get the translation here and it's added in, we can know that it's a good thing. It's a, a good point to, to ponder or, or note to take. But, you know, as we, as we do ponder it as guys from, from different backgrounds, as I mentioned, it may be for some of us a great encouragement. And yet it may be for some of us a kind of challenge, maybe even a discouragement. It could be discouraging because you here this morning feel like you've been robbed because unlike Solomon who had David as a father, and don't we know that there's a difference between being a dad and being a father, right? And though here's Solomon you know, sitting down before his old man, and I say that respectfully, certainly, but he was old, as we've seen, but he had an old man. He had a father. And, and so as some of us look at this, this is discouraging because we feel like we kind of got ripped off. We, we never got a guidebook passed down to us. Now for others of those here this morning, it may be encouraging to, to re-approach or 
come back into focus with, with some of these things because you, you have had and you maybe still do have a father that was diligent in giving you all <laughs> that God had for your future. But you know, whether it's a discouraging subtitle or discouraging in some way, in either case, it's good to know. It's an encouraging that we can sit here this morning and know for sure that, that God is with us, amen? And he is a good, good father as we sing. And he has given us in, in his word everything for life and godliness. And so wherever you find yourself, in, and most of us are somewhere in the middle there, the eternal father, the eternal God has delivered to us all that is needed. Hmm. And you know, whether with a good example here on this earth, as I and, and many others of you are lacking that good example, but whether we did or didn't, but we can count on our heavenly Father to impute, to impart, to bring to us what is needed, and, and that we know in that that we have not been left alone. Praise God. We have not been left to ourselves. Now, my subject is this subject of prospering in all that we do. The idea of succeed, I, I think that word is, is in un, other translations too, succeed in, in everything you do. Well, it, it's tied to the rest of that verse, isn't it? L look back there at verse 3 with me. It says, to begin with, to keep the charge. And, and again, Pastor Ray just brought us the insights of, of that charge. And it's to keep the charge of the Lord, the Lord your God, and to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and commandments and judgments and his testimonies. And then comes, again, my, my portion of that verse, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. Let's begin by looking, as we often do as teachers of the word, let, let's look at that that word specifically, that word prosper. In the Strong's, it's, of course, here in the Old Testament, a Hebrew word, and it's one that I, I'm certain I slaughter as I attempt to, to say it, but it's sakal. And it's used 63 different times, at least in the authorized version, that is the King James. We find it 63 different times, and it's translated a number of different ways. Twelve times it's translated as understand. Another twelve times as wise. Eight times here as it is translated as prosper. Six times wisely. To understand or understanding five times. Consider four times. Instruct three times. Prudent twice. Skill twice and teach twice. Now the definition of this word is very fascinating too. It means to be prudent, to be circumspect. There, there's a good word for us, to be circumspect, to, to wisely understand, to prosper. A, B, in, in the definitions give, given in the Strong's, it says to look at or upon ha and have insight, to give attention to, to consider, to ponder, to Again, be prudent, to have insight, to have comprehension. Notice again that, that word here in this definition is given twice as prudent, prudence. You know, as I, I first began to walk with the Lord, for me, 38 years ago, and I know some of you guys think, man, he doesn't even look that old. <laughs> Some of you guys are being really nice, being quiet. But I, I figured when I first began to walk with the Lord, knowing that I was going to need a wife, that my wife would come by the name of Prudence <laughs> so she could remind me of these things. So she could be the one that, that 
gave me what was needful. And for me, it was better yet. I got Kim, my wife, if you've met her. She's a, a, a blessed thing in my life the last 36 years. And she's actually teaching at a conference up in, in Colorado. I, I think we should go where she is. She's up by Vail somewhere up in the, in the mountains. <laughs> but she's been given to me to remind me of this idea of prudence, to, to act with and to give careful thought of the future. Man, do we need prudence in our life. Amen, guys? It seems with that as the heart or at the heart of the definition of this idea to prosper, we understand from this passage that prospering has this idea behind it that it has to do much more with what's going on inside of us as men than what is going on on the outside of us as men. And I, I'm not going to take anything away from any of you who are seeking to, you know, be first in the, the Bro Olympics this year, but that's really what we're, we're getting at and this phrase, that you may prosper in all that you do and, and wherever you turn, we see that it's connected to this charge. Keep the charge of the Lord to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and commands and judgments. All that's written in the laws of Moses. And then the tagline, that you may prosper. May I suggest that our prospering here, the procuring of prudence, the, the acquiring of what we so desperately need as men, is, is simply a byproduct of walking in the way with the Lord. It, it's a byproduct of that. It, it comes by way of keeping his statutes. And I therefore dare to say this to you, to us, to me this morning. Without walking and without keeping what God puts before us, yes, day by day and certainly today, but without walking those, those things out and keeping those things fresh in our minds, we will not, I dare say, we cannot begin to prosper in our spiritual lives. It, it does not equate. It will never meet up, guys. Just because you've entered the room doesn't give you an automatic passing grade spiritually. No. And you know, it, it, it fits, I believe, quite well with the call that Jesus has upon our lives. Think of what he said to those that began to follow him. He, he used words like, come to me. Follow me, hear me, learn of me, abide in me. Those are all engaging terms. And most of those are <laughs> the responsive terms. When he says, come to me, that means we need to respond. When he says, learn of me, that means we need to sit down and encounter the Lord. Now, the Apostle Paul, who I, I think we would all agree was a fairly good spiritual prosperer, he took up this idea in his writings to the church, didn't he? And, and he put it down on paper. Specifically, I have a few verses to look at opening with Ephesians chapter 4, if you're a note taker, 
It's verses one through three. He writes there, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, and I love pointing that out, that he wrote this letter from a jail cell. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, all of us who have been in jail, and now you're going, wow, you've been to jail? Yeah, I have as a chaplain. I, I have gone many times. Fortunately, I've never been on the other side of the bars by the grace of God, not because I was so clean. But he writes this himself from the backside of the bars. And he finds himself there because of preaching the gospel. But he goes on to say to the Ephesian church, I beseech you to walk worthy of the call with which you were called with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love. And, and I love verse 3. It says, it says there, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. He goes on the next chapter of that same letter, verses 8 through 10, or 8 and 10. He says, for you were once darkness, and how dark Did we walk in that darkness, huh, guys? Thank God we can look at a verse like this and say, oh, Jesus, thank you for your grace. Thank you for the light of the gospel, amen? For though you were once darkness, but now you are light, light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And here's what what takes place. Look Look at the benefit. Verse 10, finding out what, is the accept or, or what is acceptable to the Lord. He goes on a few verses later, verses 15 through 17 in chapter 5 of Ephesians. See then that you walk circumspectly. I'm sure you've been through a study of that demeanor in the spiritual walk, to, to walk with eyes wide open and, and ears fully attentive. Paul says, walk circumspectly, not as fools, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil, and man, they're getting darker and darker and more and more corrupt. Hmm. Therefore, do not be unwise. Again, here's here's the outcome of walking and pursuing those things of the Lord. Do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Paul goes on to to apply a different term in his letter to the Philippians. I'm in chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected or matured, but I press on. I press on that I may lay hold of, of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, look how he speaks to us. Uh, Someone just said it, but it's not just to the pastors that he's speaking. This is a letter to the church body, to the brethren. So wherever you are in the ministry of the church, listen, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead, I press towards the goal. And what is that goal? It's the goal of the, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And then he really lays it out. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 24 through 27. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? But one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now, they do do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we... For an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty, but I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. 
lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Guys, these are not, these are not recommendations like who, who's been to dinner with their wife or their girlfriend lately? How many of you have, have this same quandary when you go out to eat with your girl? You can sit there for 10, 15, 20 minutes, and you're like, honey, you ready to order? And she's like, I, I'm just not sure. Anybody? You know what Kim has learned to do in the last decade of our, our marriage? She's, she's gone. She goes, okay, what are you ordering? Okay, I'll get it. <laughs> I always out-order her. You know, she's always going, man, I wish that I, I'd ordered what you got. And I, I don't share. I'm the baby of nine kids. So <laughs> if I got food in front of me, you better watch out if you dare. <laughs> and, you know, so you throw out suggestions, Right. Well, this looks good, and that looks good. And, and then, you know, it's, again, 20 minutes, and there's still no order. Guys, these are not recommendations on a menu. No. These are the guidelines. And again, dare I say, the demands upon us and anyone who has called upon the name of Jesus to be their Lord and their Savior. These aren't suggestions. These are the demands upon our lives as men of God. And, and we dare not put them in any other category. If you and I are looking and hoping to progress in this thing called spiritual prospering, we got to get these things down. We have to give ourselves to these things. We need to walk it out. Day by day. Not hit and miss. Not, not maybe when it's convenient again. No. It, it, aren't we so glad that it's a walk of faith? You know, we got a crazy guy in the church. He likes to run like, you know, an enormous, I think that's the appropriate word, an enormous amount of miles at one time without stopping unless he's got to pee. Like a hundred miles. Yeah, like I said, he's crazy, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank God it's a walk. Thank God what he's called us to do is doable for all of us. It's just one step of faith after another. But we need to walk it, guys. We need to walk it out. We need to press on through and not say, oh, here, here's, here's another wall of, of distraction. I, I think I'll just sit before it. No, we need to press through, guys. And as he did use the term, we need to run. But run <laughs> all out. Spiritually, we need to be engaged in the things that the Lord has put before us and to fight till the finish. I was in the military. Well, I consider it the military. If, if you're like a Navy guy or a Marine, you'll probably go, that wasn't the military. I was in the Coast Guard. It was mid-'80s. You know, the Reagan administration had gone into the Middle East, and 
And as a 21-year-old, I was like, you know, I, I think I'm going to pick before I'm pushed into a service. So I chose the Coast Guard. And for six years, I served the country in that regard. And the beginning of that service is just like any other beginning to your service life. And that, that, that means basic training. Anybody been through basic training? Thank you for your service, guys. Basic training can, can be grueling. Can I get an amen from those of you who've been through it? Yeah. And, and the Coast Guard is just as grueling. Eight weeks of basic training. And there's all sorts of, you know, testing that you have to go through. All sorts of qualifications that you have to meet to get beyond basic training. And in fact, in, in my company's time, in the, the eight weeks that we had, we had one gentleman that joined us, and he joined us having already having been there for like 10 weeks, but he kept getting pushed back because he couldn't get through the qualifications. Maybe that's where you are Spiritually. And, and yet, graciously, God has put you here in the midst of this company to say, okay, get it this time. Run through to the finish. Walk on. Press through. Don't quit. And as we heard from Joe... There's no need for us to quit because the Spirit of God has been given to us, guys. Jesus said that the same Spirit that you have seen work in me, you will have. The same Spirit that enabled him to take on the, the challenges that came his way, which included dealing with a bunch of knuckleheads to begin with, right? Right? Somebody mentioned Gail Irwin. I love how he, he says, man, if I was God, I would have gotten rid of the apostles and moved on to the B-apostles, probably even through the, you know, the whole alphabet. But thankfully, God has, has given us a walk. He, he's given us a life to live for him. Now, I have to not even confessing, it's not like I hide it, but it's been some time since I've, I've worked out, you know. Certainly haven't di been doing anything to get ready for the Bro Olympics. Um, you know, I'm not as old as, as Joe, but I'm right behind him. And so, though I put a few miles on here and there on my mountain bike, I, you know, I, I'm not in, you know, any great physical condition Amen. yeah <laughs> thank thanks for that <laughs> but my point guys my point is if you want to be in shape <laughs> and not just become a shape Right? It takes some sweat equity. My crazy friend who runs all those miles, he, he, he doesn't get out there, you know, after eating like a pig or eating, you know, what he shouldn't have or, or just having, you know, run around the block and then he goes, hey, I think I'll take on a marathon. The guy has run a marathon in one day and then he's at work the rest of the day. I'm like, man, let's, let's pray for you, you know? <laughs> no, but there's some training, right? There's some sweat equity that through that we acquire some shape, some stamina, Guys, this is just as true in our spiritual endeavors. It's just as true for our spiritual shape, for our spiritual health. 
Please don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Don't be deceived. Don't take the bait of the enemy. Please don't. Don't take that bait and and think, yeah, I can just coast. You know, I've, I've read that passage before. I'll be okay here in this place, spiritually. Guys, don't take the bait. You know, when when those thoughts are are begun to be, or begin to be processed in our mind, you know who's right there to cheer us on? (laughs) Yeah, the enemy of our souls. Hey, sweet, yeah, just sit back. No problem. Yeah, that's a good idea. Don't, yeah, put it off. Oh, it's been a a long week. Yeah, I know. Just kick back. Guys, don't allow yourself to go there. But rather, press in. Walk on. Run through. Finish the race. Finish it. There there are those around us that are depending upon us. Though they may not even know it, they're looking to us for how well we will finish our race. Don't give in to the devil. Don't be fooled. The idea of A day off spiritually is yet another lie from the pit of hell. What's true, when we're honest with ourselves, when we're honest before the God who who loves us, what's true is that our engagements in spiritual things, things like, as has been mentioned, time in the Word, time on our knees, the engagement with those things, our walk day by day, step by step, those things, those engagements with what God has set before us are determining our spiritual shape. They have us in the place we are today. Those decisions that we have made to seek him diligently or half-assedly, they have determined the shape we are in today and the shape that we will be in tomorrow. question is, what kind of shape is that? I, I certainly can't tell by standing up here and, and having this advantage to look down on you, not spiritually, but just physically. I can't tell what spiritual shape any of us are in, can I? Now, I know some of you, and I, I believe that you know, many of those that I, I know, they're tracking well with the Lord. So their spiritual shape is healthy to that degree that I have experienced them. But the only one who truly knows, well, the two people, you and the Lord. So don't be fooled, but set about your life to look, (laughs) spiritually look like an Olympiad rather than a couch potato. Or maybe a little bit more to the point here, a pew potato fits in the church, doesn't it? You know, we can find ourselves warm in a pew, sitting in a seat, day after week, after month, after year, and yet if all we're doing is is coming in and going, well, you know, she sees me here or they see me here, so I'm good to go. No. No. Now, I I tell people often, you know, 
going to Taco Bell doesn't make you a taco any more than going to church, just showing up, makes you a strong man of God. We've got to be given over to it. Amen? And you know, that's not a call that Jesus didn't have to take on himself because he was fully man and fully God. And every morning, he dealt with the same thing that you and I deal with. Now, he had a different track record. I get it. You know, never was there a morning that he woke up and said, oh, I I hope I choose correctly because he always chose correctly to give his father his life. His every step, his every breath, his every thought. And so for you and I, man, a new day means, ooh, this is tentative. I know I've said this before. Who's, who's, hit, who's turned sideways in the bed, put their feet on the floor and said, oh, I hope I don't fail like I did yesterday. Or maybe even preface that thought with, oh, yesterday I said I was not going to get angry I said I was going to love my wife. I said I was going to be faithful at the job. And then you come back to bed going, man, I failed that. I was a total jerk. I was an idiot. I, I collapsed under pressure. And so you wake up the next morning, you're hit, your feet hit the deck, and you go, God, would you meet me? I know I didn't meet you yesterday. I did it all by myself. Aren't we thankful that we have a God who is gracious and merciful? Isn't it wonderful to know, yet again, fresh in our minds, that his grace and his mercy are new every stinking day? Every single day. I always tell people, isn't that good to know? And you know what what else is true? It's morning somewhere else on the planet. I'm going to go and grab that fresh grace and mercy for my life. How wonderful it is to know that God meets us in the midst of whatever shape that we have acquired. Now, I, I have a hunch. This is just a hunch. But in just a little bit, a number of you guys are going to go and exert a bunch of energy trying to get around or attempting or succeeding getting around a a field of obstacles and and a lot of physical exertion is gonna be expended right just a little bit some of you guys are going would you hurry up and finish so i can go practice again (laughs) But I want to ask you the question, how expectant are you? How excited are you in your spiritual exercises? Hmm. You know, the world, as has again been noted, It's caving in. It's imploding, I think would be a good definition. You know, in in some ways, I think I just shared this with the church last, last Sunday, the attack often comes from within and not without. And, And so too personally. The attack or the the failures come from us. It doesn't necessarily come from the world. Oh, the the devil's out there, and he'll tempt us. You know, he'll whisper in our ear. And and unfortunately, again, we take the bait, and we go down that path, that ruinous path, and the world's certainly throwing out a bunch of glitz around us, especially in, in those areas that we as men can become very vulnerable. Can I get an amen? It's all across the spectrum. The world's imploding. And yet, guys, know this. God desires to use you 
and I, yes, believe it or not, you and I, he has a plan. He has a desire and a plan to utilize every single one of us here today to utilize us for his kingdom, to speak truth to those around us and to do that by means of our life lived out before those people. That's his desire. His plan is that we would prosper fulfilling, as David said in that passage, what the Lord had spoken to him about his his sons. If they would heed God's word, as David had. Again, not perfectly. We've understood that. It it wasn't in perfection that, that any of those saints have gone before us. But David, (laughs) he puts that idea of prospering in that setting that God had done a work in his life, through his life, and for the glory of God. And so here was David desiring to pass on the desires of God to that next generation that was Solomon. That, That the... Lord may fulfill his word. Mm. And yet again, we must come to this place and say, it's not just about showing up. It's not just about going, man, I, I've been at this conference for, you know, maybe you're, you, you can go all the way back however far that is, with the conferences that have been held by such a gracious and loving church. But it's not about that ticket. It's not not about a scorecard. It's kind of like, you know, on on the headstone. What, What dates are on it? The founding date of that life and the ending date? And then what's in the middle? That mad dash, right? the dash that's called life, the time that God's given us on this planet to make an impact. Guys, we must be given over to these things. How many many of you did this this morning during worship? It's not asking a question like, what does that word mean? But who raised their hand in worship? Go ahead, raise your hand if you did. Okay, who raised two hands? And who did that because they remember what it's like to respond to a cop? (laughs) Yeah. You know, as a chaplain, there were many conversations I had with guys that were whining and complaining and, you know, all, you know, making excuses. And I would do this. In the midst of their conversation, I, I would just raise my hands and they'd be kind of looking at me weird. But I'd say, so guys... You're telling me that you were willing to do this to a man because he had a gun and some authority, but you were willing to surrender to a man. How about you do that to God? And and I'm not saying that, you know, only raising one hand is not, you know, appropriate or sincere. I do that, you know, my one hand will get tired sometimes, or I I won't even raise a hand. The idea is the surrender of our heart, the surrender of our souls, guys, the giving over of control in in all of those areas that that Dion so loudly put in my face, right? Put in our faces. We must be given over to them. We must be engaged in them. Our spiritual walk includes us. God is the strength of it, but we've got to be given over to it. 
In closing, I want to I want to share two verses that I believe the Lord's shown me to put before you regarding this. One in the old and one in the new. Let's go with the new. It's, it's Matthew 6, 33. You probably know it by heart. Seek first. This comes with a, a whole tale in front of it, right? But he comes to this place and he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those things shall be added to you. What were all those things? All the things, the cares and the needs of this life. Jesus was saying, hey, don't sweat the small stuff. Be focused on the big stuff. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all that you have need of, they will be cared for. Does that sound like prospering? To me, it sure does. This one from the Proverbs. Guys, if you, if you don't have a practice of going through the Proverbs on a, you know, routine nature, you know, whether it's month by month or, or hitting it every six months, man, that's a great book. For every topic in life. But from that, again, another passage you you very likely know by heart. It's Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. I know that's two more verses, but hang with me. What's it say? Trust in the Lord. With what? In all. With all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways. What? And what will take place? And what will take place? He shall direct your paths. Does that sound like prospering? Yeah. But there's a warning. Similar warning that we hear in the book of James. And that is, don't be double-minded. Don't be double-minded. Don't be coming in with your Bible and, you know, with that flashcard, you can say, hey, I've been here since the start. Don't be double-minded. You know what it says about the double-minded man in James, right? He will be unstable in everything. The proverb goes on to bring that same warning. It says in verse 7 of that same proverb 3, do not be wise in your own eyes. You guys ever remember that, that goofy little same statement? Don't be wise, bubble eyes, will cut you down to peanut size. Understand, rubber band, you're a woman, I'm a man. You guys, ever, anybody hear that? Come on. Yeah, a few of us. Yeah, That's, I know, it's old school. But I, I, I can't get away from that when I, when I read this. Don't be wise in your own eyes. It goes on, it says, fear the Lord. Depart from evil. And then verse 8, I love it. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. And then I'll put the tagline, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. Guys, as we close, I want to once again, before we stand for competition outside, those of you who are young enough or forgetful enough to do that. I want to have you guys stand right where you are if you need help with this. If if the Lord has struck a chord with you in this study. And, And I want to have us stand before the Lord again for a heart that's like this. For a willingness to say, God, I, I'm all yours. I, I've been 90% yours. Man, if you're, if you're there, that's incredible. Maybe it's just 70. Maybe it's 50. 50-50, you know? We think that's fair sometimes. It's, it's not in spiritual life. In, in fact, there, there is no gain to be got in a 50-50 spiritual world. So I'm going to encourage you to stand where you are 
if you truly want to see prospering happen in the affairs of your spiritual life. But guys, because this is, this is um, it's, it's to be taken serious. So it may not be for you. Don't stand just because you've been to every other conference and, you know, it's the thing to do. Stand if the Lord has really struck your heart. And if you've been convicted of not pressing into him, of not taking the next step of faith to grow in him, don't don't stand unless you truly sense the Lord has struck you has struck a spiritual nerve that you need to personally respond to. But if that's you, I just want to pray for us because I know I need it too. Ask my kids, ask my wife, ask my grandkids. The Lord's still working on this guy. If that's you, turn your phone off. But no, if if that's you, stand with me. And let's pray the Lord. So Father, we do humbly come before you as your boys, Lord, as your sons. God, as men of God. And yet men, Lord, once again, men that are in great need. Father, for my brothers and myself, I pray that we come humbly, maybe broken because, Lord, you have put before us in the last few studies, Lord, information that we, we've never pondered, we've never taken serious. Lord, we've never even desired for our own, our own lives. And Lord, so my, for my brothers and myself, God, I, I ask that you would be once again merciful and gracious. And Lord, pour out from the windows of heaven, God, what it is that we need. And certainly in a word, that is Jesus. And all the attributes, all the characteristics, God, that we see when we encounter Jesus. God, however, in whatever capacity, to whatever amount, God, would you meet us? God, would you hmm, lovingly, kindly, God, meet us, minister to us, and Lord, for your glory, God, for your glory and not our own, have your way. Transform us, Lord, that we truly would prosper in our adventure with you. In this walk of faith, God, that you have given us, so incredibly given us the opportunity to walk in with one another, but Lord, with you. The giver, the sustainer, the author, and the finisher of our life and our faith. God, we, we, we afresh commend ourselves to you, commit ourselves to you. Jesus, It's in your name. Amen.